Hi, my name's Doug. I'm a bug scanning picker. I specialize in clocks. Um, I was a mechanic, so I have kind of have an aptitude, but uh, I'm not a horologist. So uh, I'm going to show you how I do them. Um, you follow me or not, you know. Uh, a lot of people don't like the way I do it, but that's kind of the fun part. Um, so, you know, you might see some pinball machines and some other crap in there too. Uh, you know, do just about anything electrical, mechanical, that kind of thing. Uh, but uh, maybe later on I'll take you on some, um, some shopping trips to see where I get the stuff. But um, for now, we can, uh, we can start with some clocks. Got a couple projects picked out, so we'll make some videos. And uh, if you have any questions, you can post them here. I'll answer them. Uh, please subscribe and uh, have fun. Thanks. Picked up this uh, steel case and Sonya clock. It's missing the glass. The back is off. Looks like the springs are going to be good. Didn't run it, but uh, looks like everything's going to be nice. Should be able to come apart and go back together really easy. Uh, let's get started. All right. Again, it's missing the glass. Looks like that paper's coming off a little bit. Missing some paint on the edges. It was roughed up. It's dirty. Got some nice cobweb in there. Sonia movement. Doesn't look too dirty. An original, you can see the name on there. Might want to put some leather in there. It looks a little bit. Now we'll see how it comes around. Doesn't want to come apart. It comes in handy having been a mechanic. Got some pretty good tools. Alright. Gotta get the big guy. Impact driver. We you start cleaning it up. So, one other thing. Uh, when I do this to a clock, it's because um, it's lost its collector value. Um, you know, you got the original finish here, but um, enough is gone now that uh, even a restoration is going to be noticeable. Um, you know, so, and it's a common clock, too. Um, you wouldn't want to do this with something that was worth, you know, three, four thousand dollars $4,000. And obviously, you would look it up first. Um, you know, if this was in mint condition, you'd go three to $500. But... You know, or, you know, in restored condition where somebody's uh, put all new bushings and brand new parts in it and, you know, done the case up to a certain level. And, uh, yeah, okay, you know, uh, comes with a warranty, that kind of thing. Uh, it's not what we're doing here. We're, we're building $100, $150 clocks. Because that's what people want to buy. They don't want to spend a whole lot, you know. Uh, this isn't a, a time piece that you need to uh, you know, schedule your day by. It's a cute little rattle box that uh, makes noise and makes people happy you know um, so I just wanted to clarify that you know um, I've sold my share of thousand two thousand three thousand dollar clocks uh, that I wouldn't even touch uh, you know uh, but the, that's what we're doing here yeah, I've got the movement out looks pretty dirty I don't think it's had any kind of service recently 
But we knew that by looking at the rusty case. You can see the springs are intact. These pivot holes look pretty good. You can see it's got some gummed up oil in there. They look pretty good, not, not worn or uh, corroded. Same at the front. Pivots aren't worn out. Bushings are not needed. Uh, got some uh, synthetic oil in a pen. Get these on eBay or Time Savers, wherever. Uh, they're all pretty much the same. They're all made of synthetic nowadays. And we're going to oil pivot points. Just need a drop to sit in that little cup. Cups hold the oil while the shaft spins. Let's it get drawn into the shaft. Want to do this on both sides. And it really is a critical thing. You need you need to get you get all the moving parts, right? Here's the other side. Put these oil in the cups. Another spot I like the oil is the springs. You can see how this wicks incredibly um, you just really need to put it on the sides and it'll wick inside all right so we'll get some oil in there and wind it up you can wind it up see springs rubbing against each other spread that oil around Nice and smooth. No popping, clicking, or anything going on. Look at that. We woke it up. Started moving already. Time side spring, we're gonna do the same thing. We'll just put this way out here. You'd like to see that man. We're gonna put oil in the spring here. And light the other side. Give this a wind up. Again you can see we Sliding into place. Get that oil moving around. Now we get that time side wound up, and you can kind of see the oil coming out of it a little bit, but that's okay because we're still on the bench. Almost looks like it wants to run. go in here and you'll see make sure we get some oil on these joints these connection here so I oiled it found it would only run for a short period of time and then it would just stop uh, Nice thing about when you run these on a vise or outside the case is you can kind of look inside and see what's going on. Uh, what I found is that the uh, escape wheel, this part right here, the escape wheel, had two teeth that were bent nearly straight up. And when the pallet right there would hit, it would lock up. Um, which was a horrible thing to do, but I took a pair of tiny needle nose pliers and straightened out the teeth. And now, 
if you look. I don't think you're going to be able to tell which two were the ones that got bent. So what I'm going to do, I like to run them on the bench for a while before I put them back in a case. So I'm going to build myself a little rack to put this on so it can sit there and run while I paint the case, which is over there. So now I got it mounted up on the uh, makeshift little rack here. I got two floating pieces so that you can adjust it back and forth. If you pin it with two screws, you can adjust the geometry so you can make it uh, level. Tuck that in a corner and let it run for a couple days. Maybe boil it once in a while if you need something extra. Let's see how it performs. Ready to work on the case now. Had it all uh, taken apart. You can see some rust, worn paint, some imperfections. So I'm going to repaint, be repainting it black. Um, so I'm thinking I don't have to sand it all the way down to bare metal. I can leave the paint that's on here as sort of a primer just coat over it. I think that's going to save me some time, some paint, and it'll actually look pretty good. So I'm going to start with steel wool and 400 sandpaper. This is the bottom panel. Uh, it holds the gong and just keeps dirt and dust out. Um, you never see it when it's running, you know, but um, since I got it off, I feel like I got to do something. And I've got ebony stain. Uh, I'm going to put some of that on, treat it. I think it's going to come out nice. You know? It's not worth doing these little things when people look, they. Oh, how nice that is! To the bottom, you know. You don't have to do the bottom. Go ahead and do it, you know. That's it. Just a, coming out nice, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't that nice? The little things. <clears throat> Paint's been drying overnight. dial had a paper replacement done quite a while ago. It was lifting up. I, I believe somebody peeled it back to try and see what was underneath. Um, it's got some marks in it, but you know, it, uh, the paper's probably about 90% good, so for something like this, uh, we're going to just glue it back down there and uh, clean it up a bit. Let it go. But let's start putting this case back together. Pack driver to put this back together so we don't have any issues. The top and the bottom of the columns are just this uh, pot metal. It had a really poor brass coating on it when it was new. Uh, there's no way to bring it back, it's just missing. So I'm going to experiment a little bit with this hammered copper. Uh, I think it might do. Uh, I'm going to go very, very light. A lot of times when people paint these things, they put too much paint on them. This is the detail. Looks like hell. Alright, I glued the top 
of the dial back in and it was missing the bezel. Ordered a brand new piece from Time Savers. Came wrapped rather nicely. And what we're gonna do, I'm gonna put the glass in the bezel. Now gotta be careful. I hate buying more than one piece of glass. If you look here, you can see that the, the uh, glass is held, the brass ring inside this bezel, and you can see that it was soldered in place in a couple spots. There's one spot we got lucky here, solder's broken. So I'm gonna pry that out and lift it up and try and slide the glass under there and pop this back in. Let's see if it works. There you go. Popped it back in. I think I'm going to use a little adhesive in there to make it tight so it doesn't rattle. Finished up painting. Put the columns together. I'm going to put the movement in it now. Put the dial on. Uh, just going to reassemble the whole thing. Movement's been running pretty nice. I'll let it run free for a while. Looks like everything's good. Alright, so I've reassembled the clock. Got the dial in there. You can barely see the new glass in the, in the bezel. Um, we can do some touch-ups later on. With the spray paint, you need to wait at least 48 hours to uh, do any touch-ups. You don't really ever want to... Uh, maybe I'll show you one day what happens. But you don't really want to play with that if uh, you can't don't have to. you got to set the beat, too. Um, you do this with the back off because you're going to have to adjust the crutch uh, so that it has an even beat. You want to make sure your work surface is level uh, to start with. You also want to make sure... Uh, on steel cases, sometimes when you tighten the screws down and hold it in, it tweaks the movement and stops it from working. So, what I do is I set it all up relatively loose, I wiggle it in there and, and tighten it down slowly, making sure that it still runs. That way I know the geometry is still correct and it's not going to wear out. Uh, been running good for about 10-15 minutes, so I think I'm going to put the back on and put this one into testing.